Yes, Hickok 45 here, your uh, bumbling internet uh, companion <laughs> coming to you from the beautiful hills of Tennessee. Yes, this week, the home of a lot, a lot, tens of thousands at least uh, of, of subscribers to Paul Harrell. Yes, so we're here again and it's a beautiful day, just a little warmish, a little humidish. But it's a beautiful day. I finally remembered to put a cap on my muzzle loader, and uh, they just won't go off. Sometimes they go off half cocked. They'll go off fully cocked, but they'll go off in neither condition if you don't have a cap on the nipple. Yes. So you might have noticed that was quite a magnum round, wasn't it? Incredible. I think I measured out. Uh, change the measure uh, 15 maybe 20 grains of powder. I thought that'd be cool That way I could shoot and actually I was gonna shoot the paper target first with that so it wouldn't just blow it off But then I changed my mind got to looking at the cowboy down there and he was sneering at me And he needed a 500 grain chunk of lead a mini ball mini ball as we call it We we give balls in the United States most of the time, right? But it's, uh, it was, uh, Claude Manet wasn't the only developer of it, actually, but, uh, but he was uh, instrumental. Claude Manet, a French fellow. Yeah, you knew that. Yeah, Manet, Manet. So, again, it's not just many because it's a whatever. It doesn't seem like a small bullet, does it? Uh, but, I mean, it's not an artillery piece. Uh, so uh, you might think that many just means it's a smaller rifle bullet rather than a cannon, but no, that's not it. It's uh, Claude Manet. And I decided uh, about once a month, I thought this would be a good day to, to uh, maybe just light up a Zeno Platinum in memory of Paul. I pretty much already said what I had to say about that, I, uh, but I would say a few things today. Um, uh, yeah, I didn't really mean for that little video I did. Uh, it was like the day after I guess he died. Yeah, I don't know, but I uh, I'd already I just finished the Sunday video for that week and and didn't say anything about it, of course, because I didn't know. And uh, um, so I want to do something. I didn't really mean for it to be a tribute or to do some. Okay, this is my official tribute to to Paul Harrell or anything. I just wanted to say a couple things and. Really, really short, you know, video at least for me. But anyway, that's that's kind of all it was. What can you say, you know? And uh, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people have have done things. I think I've seen one maybe. But uh, and you know, he's just in everybody's memory, and then always will be as long as we're out here on the range shooting, uh, fumbling around doing videos, right? Uh, so uh, what I have had in mind to get out ever since we did the I didn't give it a thorough cleaning uh, so that and by, by which by the way I'm standing right here and yak and uh, let it get clogged up on me but uh, let the powder residue set up want that to happen um, since we did the last muzzleloader video I hadn't given it a thorough clean it's had it soaked soaked cleaned and soaking and because I wanted to get it out on a Sunday I wanted to shoot it some more in this fall weather because this is my favorite weather for shooting black powder. I've mentioned that before. There's just something about the fall that, I mean, you can't put your finger on it. I don't know what it is. Uh, I've never even been a hunter, really. Uh, I can understand if I was, uh, for about one season, maybe, uh, or two, one or two, I thought I was gonna be a deer hunter back in the early 70s. And I did carry my hawk and Thompson Center into the woods a time or two and uh, that was really cool 
I don't know what I'd done if I'd actually shot something. I'd read up on how to field dress, but and I was ready, but I'm not sure I was really ready, you know. So it's best I didn't get a deer, I guess. Um, so, as I always tell people, I'm just too lazy to, to hunt and just not into it like a lot of people. It's kind of like motorcycles or whatever it is. I Interesting, but I'm not really into it enough to dedicate myself to it enough to do it right and do it, do it well, that kind of thing. So it's good to see everybody out here on this beautiful day. Uh, I'm gonna take some shots with this thing because I really like it. By the way, this is the 18, check the description, the eight, model 1861. This is the winner of the <laughs> last muzzleloader I'd ever give up. Uh, 58 caliber, yeah man, made in 1862. So it is, it most assuredly saw use in that big conflict back in the 1860s, right? All kinds of battle scars on it. And uh, uh, just perfect though, it's in uh, pretty good shape, shootable. And I'm gonna do that. I really am, I sure am. But again, uh, with Paul, it's such a, a tough loss. And you know, I was thinking, for some people, I don't know who that would be, but someone who's 18 or 20, 22, three or something, or young enough that you've not had losses much in your life. Even people you didn't know that well, maybe. You've not lost any family members or friends, uh, relatives, uh, and they were close. And, and uh, just not, not a lot of loss. And I remember those days when I was there, I, I would hear about somebody uh, having lost a parent or whatever it was. I'm like, wow, I don't know how you deal with that. I, I can't, I couldn't even imagine. I'd look at my parents and, and I'd say, I just can't imagine, you know, them being gone. You know, that would just be so, so bizarre and, um, and all that. So, you know, and if you were following Paul closely and seeing like most of his videos and, and you're into firearms and you just, uh, loved him and, and you learned so much from him and everything then and then he's gone uh, it, it's especially hard it's harder than anybody when you lose people but uh, yeah unfortunately yeah you don't get used to it but it's happened before and uh, you've been faced with that mortality you know many times that lost several times and uh, but you know, anyway, I, uh, Paul was a great, great fellow. And I, I was trying to remember the various exchanges I had with him. I, I know one was early, the first one, I think, when I first discovered him, maybe. I, uh, I don't know, I left a, I don't know what video it was on. I, maybe one of you have seen it. I, uh, I said something about, uh, it was good, it was great to find somebody that was, almost as quirky as I am, or as quirky and weird as I am, or so, something like that, you know, I knew he'd get it. Because I was serious, he, he was a little quirky guy. I mean, I love that about him. He's really a character, you know, and that sense of humor, and you weren't always sure whether he was uh, doing something kind of ironically or being humorous, uh, that dry humor, or that's just the way he is or was, you know, you just see, either way, he was kind of funny, you know, I liked it. and. Uh, but anyway, I said something like that. And he answered me back, you know. He, he yeah, he was, he, he got it. And he was, yeah. Anyway, I have to they changed another time, but I don't remember what it was all about. Too bad he was so far away, uh, other side of the world, uh, out there. But uh, you know, and that's one part of the country, about the only part I've not been in. You know, up into the uh, the far the north uh, west, I've never stepped foot. And uh, I don't know, there's not many states I've not stepped foot in. And that, uh, that's one, Oregon and Washington, I have never been in. Even passing through, which I'm not sure where you'd pass through to, right? maybe Alaska or somewhere, <laughs> the Pacific Ocean. So, uh, yeah, it, and it's our duty, you all realize, to carry on and be out here on a nice day shooting doing videos, yeah, same thing he'd be doing, right? So let's just lock one on out there. <laughs> yeah, 
Oh man. Yep. Sweet. Ah, yeah, sweet. Paul Harrell would have enjoyed shooting this, and uh, it's a, a special, especially special again because it's uh, original. That that makes it pretty cool. And uh, you can hit something with it, like a gong, uh, kind of effortlessly. You can also miss effortlessly, whether you're trying to or not, can't you? With anything, I have missed a few times with this rifle. It is a rifle. It's rifled. Uh, they typically, of course, earlier on, they're all muskets, smoothbore muskets, and then even when they start rifling them, uh, they're still kind of referred to as uh, uh, rifled muskets, you know, kind of deal. Uh, I've, I've read different definitions of that, but uh, I don't know. It's a rifle, but it's kind of a rifled musket because of the length, I think. And I just love it. Uh, I'll try what I might do in this Sunday shooter as a yak. I'll, I'll, I'll load it up a, maybe a couple, three times, and I'll just not talk. And I'll just cut that out, the loading out or something, maybe so I can get some more shots on target for you. How's that? But, yeah, a um, couple things I wanted to mention. The... Uh, yeah, the, you know, the Tennessee Farm Association uh, banquet last weekend and and uh, the three guns that I mentioned as we did videos on them throughout the year. What was it? The Blue Ridge something, uh, the uh, uh, XCR and the Zenith, whatever all their model numbers were, uh, all went to the Tennessee Farm Association auction, delivered those a couple weeks before that and everything. Here I am talking now, get this thing loaded properly. And uh, so that, that went off and uh, a reminder of that. Also, uh, <laughs> what's being, I think as, as I'm doing this, and it's supposed to rain tomorrow after today. So I'm in here in the middle of the week, uh, but that uh, I-75 shooter in Kentucky is not been found. As, as far as I know, as I'm doing this, and I thought it was funny, I I posted on Instagram the real Hickok, 45, yeah, on Instagram. I posted on there the what what the uh, uh, I turned it turns out it was the state troopers I think of Kentucky, not to make fun of them, uh, but somebody that's in the Kentucky State Police made the comment that uh, in a press conference that. You need to lock your doors. If you have any security cameras, make sure uh, you're constantly watching them. Maybe keep your porch light on. He advised residents, have your cell phone and make sure your phones are charged up because you never know when you might have to contact somebody or law enforcement. And uh, I thought when I heard that and read that, I thought, okay. And it's like I said in the posting on Instagram, I think there's a glaring omission here in terms of advice you might be giving to people and what would that be make sure you're locked and loaded right <laughs> and I, I think i said of course possibly since it's kentucky you know or tennessee or texas or somewhere like uh, in your free states uh maybe that would be kind of silly for uh, anybody to give that advice because it'd be a little bit like saying uh, make sure you have your clothes on you know make sure you're breathing oxygen this week you know because it maybe just assumes everybody's armed <laughs> in kentucky i hope that's what it was all right okay uh who was oh you know who needs to get shot uh clyde has not been has clyde ever been hit with a civil war rifle just think about it. this might be the first time in history a Bigfoot has been hit with an original Civil War rifle. Yeah, and you all witnessed it. Unless, maybe most of them were wiped out back in the 1860s or 70s with Civil War rifles. Yep, you never know. So, yeah, Clyde, sorry, that was a heavy bullet. Uh, heavy bullet. Had to introduce him to... Uh, to Mr. Monet, right? And uh, let him see what he thinks about that. Uh, I'm loading and yakking here. Thing y'all need to know about. 
Well, don't forget, you know, uh, the, the Cliffs Channel, the Talks Channel. Oh, yeah, speaking of the Talks Channel, and uh, it came to my mind, uh, uh, coincidentally, I think it was right after I posted or, or I'd already done the video on kids and guns on the Hickok 45 Talks Channel. I know a lot of you have seen it. And uh, it just rambling discussion about kids and guns and because i had been asked to talk about that uh safety and teaching kids with how to use guns or whatever and so i just talked about that and i think it was right there that that same day or two that i posted it or was about to post it or whatever that that uh, school shooting occurred in the georgia and uh and one of the things I, I talk about in that, that talks video, as you recall, is, uh, and here I go, uh, talking and loading, or talking and not loading. But one of the things, I got a notch, my notch is, yeah, it's not loaded for sure, I'm double check. But, uh, yeah, I guys put powder in. I, uh, I mentioned about teenagers, it'd be saying preteen, teen, whatever. Anybody that's, you know, young kids, boys especially, they're over, I don't know, the age of whatever, 10 or 11, 12 and 13, you know, as you get into the crazy years, yeah, for certain. Uh, you know, you, you, you just, and, and of course this, the situation in that one, I don't know, it might be pretty obvious there were problems, bad parenting and all kinds of things apparently. But uh, you, uh, you just don't know for 100% what's going through a teenager's mind, you know, anybody's mind, but teenage years are so confusing. Uh, I mean, you know, so many teens, you don't know what's going on. You're trying to figure things out. And, you know, until you get into your 20s, you just... Uh, a bundle of whatever you're just kind of a mess maybe and, and some are not but you just don't know and uh, you know boys can be even worse of course and you might think that you've got a very very responsible young man around the house when he's 14 or 18 or 16 or whatever but you know he could be going through some things at school or friends you just don't aware you're not aware of it could be taking something uh, some kinds of drugs or something you're just not aware of and just different things and uh, And that's one of the things I, I talked about you know, you just Just might want to keep things locked up, you know, no matter how well they're trained uh, Just something to think about I'm not telling you what to do but just something to think about no matter how uh, well behaved and mature your son seems to be. I know it's just something to think about. Because uh, I was kind of in that that position. Uh, you just, I, I mean, I remember those teenage years. It's tough times, tough times, it really is. What should I shoot? I should shoot that target. Let me thank uh, Bud's Gun Shop for all their support in uh, so many ways. Silence of Central, great company. They do one thing really, really well. And SDI, get yourself some firearms education. If you want to be a gunsmith someday, that will put you on the road really well. Alabama Holster, they don't make them for these, but they make some great little Kydex holsters. They probably would back in the 1860s, but they couldn't find the Kydex. Yeah, great companies. All right. I think now I'm going to shoot that. <laughs> I'm just going to take a chance. I'll step back a little bit. Ah, bullseye. That, now that's some incredible accuracy. That is some incredible accuracy. Yeah, I, I just uh, didn't realize it was that accurate. You know. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it, yeah. I now I talk about the Second Amendment too. I've been posting on that and different things. That uh, as I've said, you know, speaking of shootings and different things, whether it's the I-75 shooter, things like that are going to happen. We we got. Society really has uh, degraded, I guess. Even even though a lots, a lot of it is numbers. You got way more people, you know, and uh, so the higher percentage uh, of chance that somebody's not mentally right. 
right? But uh, but still, it's just wow. Everybody wants to be infamous, uh, famous, well known. They want to be heard, and that's uh, kind of the danger point. You know, especially with young people, I think they want to stand out in some way, be different in some way, uh, and uh, it can be manifest in a lot of, a lot of different ways. But uh, it's, it's just it's a wild crazy times and uh, I, I, I still 100% uh, the Second Amendment I you know there are worse situations you know life is risky and uh, it's risky if people are losing their brains around you of course or going bonkers or whatever it might be but uh, I don't know I've got a chance with them I don't know if I've got a chance with a government that decides uh, every little thing for me. You know, I don't want to live in a uh, police state or a uh, uh, dictatorship. You know, that's what politicians are drawn to. So many of them, right? They love that control, love that ultimate control. Uh, it, this is so cool to be able to shoot this rifle musket. You know. Uh, is I was saying, what, last week or week before, like with that video on, on the last muzzle letter I'd ever uh, give up, you know, these are the videos I wish would get a million or 20 million or 100 million views, uh, just introduce more people to the, the beauty, uh, the, I don't know, the craftsmanship, the uh, fascination that I have with these things, whether it's a replica or a real one, uh, just, Either it's exactly like what they carried, or it is what they carried back then. It's just uh, pretty cool. All right. This fires that big old 58 caliber Manet ball. And I think, I think I just want to put a Nova on Clyde. Yeah. <laughs> I want him to appreciate history. <laughs> I want him to be in contact with history uh, directly. How's that? <laughs> uh, gosh. Oh, I was speaking of large caliber. I was I wrote it down. I read. Uh, what was I reading about? I was researching a a large oh 375 Ruger. I think yeah versus 375 H and H. You know, it's kind of thinking. Do I need one of those again? <laughs> or, but anyway, I was reading, uh, somebody I don't remember who it was, said, uh, he wrote, uh, it's understood that when cartridges exceed 30 caliber, sales drop like a rock. Even so, interest in large caliber cartridges has always exceeded need. <laughs> I thought, yep, <laughs> yep, ain't that the truth. Interest in large caliber, calibers has always exceeded need, yeah. Uh, boy, that describes me. Uh, <laughs> we really don't need calibers as large as we as we often own or shoot or prefer, right? But we like them. Yeah, we like them. Uh, it's, it's just something. Uh, it, and I've said it before many times. It's it's more fun to me to shoot. Uh, well, the pistol caliber carbine, for example, I recall in uh, the LC carbine video, uh, 45. ACP one that I have uh, mentioning that I just I you know shot that same carbine in the 57 round and it's neat I was impressed with it but I uh, no interest in buying that carbine but when it came out in 45 ACP guess who got one and here I go again yacking I didn't put a ball into it. one way you can tell pretty easily too is uh, of course I can turn it upside down wipe off the end of my rod I get down there. Yep, powder. Oh, grains of powder all over the end of it. Not residue, but powder that I just put in there. Okay. So, let's put a ball in there. This is a reminder to everybody if you get into muzzle loading. You could be on the range by yourself, just knowing nothing and focusing on it. And you could dry ball, you know, forget to put powder in and things like that. It, you know, it happens to everybody eventually. But when you're with friends and you're talking or you're making a video, it can really happen, right? You can make a fool of yourself 
for everybody on video. Of course, I do that every time I turn the camera on, so I'm not worried about it too much. Oh, not a bad hog gun, right? 58 caliber. Well, that rocked him. That, look at him swing. We have never seen him swing like that since I set him up there. Yeah, man. Okay, I'm going to shut up and load one here. Okay, that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> it really doesn't with this gun. I almost don't need to do that, but I uh, thought I might get more shots in. Uh, so yeah, there, there was something else I meant to talk to you about, but I probably don't need to. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, speaking of media and stuff, uh, young people, uh, You got a, a real challenge if you're, uh, I don't know, high school or college, maybe even, trying to figure out what you want to do for a career. I say this often, my wife, wow, how would you decide, you know, uh, what to do if you were in any doubt, uh, if you're 18, 17, 16, whatever age you might be, unless you just know from early on, you just want to practice law. It's just, you got lawyers in your family and you know you want to do that or you'll be a veterinarian and that's just a life dream of yours kind of thing but if you don't have some track like that that you really are working towards that you know you just really like at least at this time you think you really like it uh you know it's it's got to be strange to figure out what in the world in this crazy world you know where the corporate world in some ways losing their minds too and uh you know, politically and uh, you just and economically, what's gonna, what's going on? You know, techno technology uh, with AI and what jobs are going to be even viable? You know, in five years or ten years or twenty, and how are they going to change and and all that? And so it it, it is. I mean, it's nothing to lose too much sleep over. It, it, it's that way to an extent in any generation. Nobody, I didn't, wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I did a bunch of stupid things like this, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know if you and, and one of the reasons I mention that is a lot of people want to make a career out of you know, doing what, what I'm doing, I guess, but not what I'm doing probably. But in media, um, see a way, a path where making videos about something, offering something to the world that and they feel like they you could make a living doing it perhaps and you might be right and, and uh, my only advice and encouragement would be to try to offer something uh, worthwhile to people uh, to some segment of people the population and not just think you know, because if you're in high school, middle school, college, maybe wherever you are, whatever age you are, you might spend a lot of time scrolling through stuff and seeing videos, of course, and you say, oh, that's cool, I could do that. A guy jumped out of a tree and landed on that trampoline, to, yeah, and then he's got a million views, or he, that guy's making money, he does, uh, you know, by stacking Coke bottles or whatever the heck it is. With, think about that, you know, you know, I mean, a lot of people have, gone viral with certain things or they might be doing really well with some crazy stuff like that because they're always thinking up something crazier to do you know for the next video but I would advise to think more seriously about that uh, you know I don't know you know there's so much crazy stuff I don't know how crazy you're gonna have to be uh, to go viral in the future you know I mean I, I mean you know is it AI is it real and you got all that going on and um, I've seen that before, whatever it might, you know, I've seen something crazier than that go away. That's boring. You know, I don't know if you're going to be able to, to think about a career just, uh, 
um, I don't know, out, not out outraging the next person, but just coming up with something more dramatic you know, every time. I would uh, try to think about what skills you have, what talent you have, what interests you have, even if they're not fully developed. Uh, and it, it might be something you could uh, really do uh, in video format to either enhance or as a sideline to what you're doing, like a lot of people do. Uh, think about that. Wow. People in all sorts of professions, and thankfully, they do it. I've learned so much about law, nutrition, you name it, uh, mechanics, whatever you want to know, people who are actual real mechanics, or they're, they're involved in this world whatever it is and they on the side they do videos maybe it's to help bring people into their business or to make extra income uh, to express their creativity you know whatever it is but they actually have something to offer and so you know at least do that don't just try to be outrageous uh, once you get out of middle school right <laughs> okay well we need a cap see Let's fire another one of these things. I'll try not to make this a two-hour uh, Sunday shoot-around, but you never know. <laughs> a miss. <laughs> I'm crushed. I was shooting down there in the hollow. Uh, but I do feel somewhat obligated. Uh, again, um, for people who are no longer with us, uh, I always feel like we're carrying the torch, you know, for the people who are not able to be out, not just people not longer with us, but they can't walk or whatever, uh, to be out on a day like this, fall's coming on uh, gradually, and uh, the air is pretty clear. Um, just, I mean, hard to beat. Firing a charcoal burner like this, a, an antique charcoal burner, Hitting, missing, just enjoying it. Uh, that's, uh, that's something all of us, every single one of us, will not be able to do at some point, even if we want to. So anyway, hopefully somebody will do it for us when we can't or when we're gone. All right, so, so anyway, uh, let me load it up again and uh, I have gotten through most videos. Uh, I don't think that we'll be losing too many of them. I don't think other than the Sunday videos. And I did start going back, once I caught up and took a few days off from doing that, uh, I'm going in reverse order. And I said, well, I don't know. Let me let me see how much how hard it would be so i have gone through and i at this point i'm uh, through i think all the 2024 uh sunday shoot arounds that should be okay okay so i don't know i'll uh, i'll work backwards uh for a while i don't know how far i'll get but uh i'll i'll try to to see what i can save there as well Okay, you post it, and again, everything is on Rumble, and uh, everything is there. Uh, and I don't know if I'll repost it. They, they took down through four of the Sunday videos. I don't know if I'll, uh, I don't know, find those and re upload them. That'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Uh, all of a sudden, you see it for those few of you who get video uh, notifications. It might be a little weird. What's this? Hickox uploaded. Oh, Sunday shoot around 223. What? What? You know, you know, on some Wednesday night. What? <laughs> I saw that three weeks ago or, or months ago. I don't know if I'll do that. Uh, I, I did. Uh, I guess confuse people a little bit. Maybe. There we go again. I think I loaded. It. I. Uh, I. Uh, yeah. I. Uh, I had worked on. There is just a weird thing. The ones they took down and then the ones that were most critically in trouble were anything after June the 18th when those new terms of service went into effect. Well, 
we had videos that were not compliant, okay, with those new terms uh, that had already been posted after that date and live, some that were in the bank and weren't live yet, weren't even uploaded yet, some that were uploaded but not live, it's, uh, so, you know, and then some before that, so it's, it's almost too confusing to think about, but one of them that was live right there during that transition time was the, the Smith & Wesson Model 41. You saw I made that live this past week again. So I didn't lost my mind. I didn't put the preface on it. It's a thing I'd already uploaded. It was, oh, I didn't put that on there. I could have done that and I didn't. I, but it's edited to be compliant. Uh, I'll just put it up there. It was it was already up and, and I, I put a pinned comment. So if you're ever confused about something uh, like that, just look at it for a pinned comment or something in the description. But so I won't do that very often. There will be, I'll put the preface on it to explain. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, we think we're okay. We'll see. Okay. But I, I don't know if I'll get through to and, and do all the uh, uh, Sunday shoot arounds, you know, if it's, if it's worth it. If they get, if more of them get taken down. I don't know that, how much that matters. Uh, I guess they still get some people coming by because they're, they're not really the news of the day. Uh, so they're still pretty evergreen. It's just me shooting and talking about a specific gun or two and talking about various things. So they're not necessarily dated, I guess, but I, I don't know that uh, you know, nobody's gonna find one because they're searching for it. <laughs> Someone goes to YouTube, hey, I'm looking for a uh, Sunday shoot around. <laughs> No, they might be looking for, of course, I put the guns in the description, so they they likely pop up, you know, for people. If they're looking for an 1861 Springfield, you know, they'll pop up. I don't know. Anyway, I'll work slowly through those. Oh, man, went through that two liter and rocked old Mr. Uh, Cowboy. And, of course, you know, when you see these, uh, anything you read, they talk about the, 58 caliber mini ball and mini ball being so incredibly devastating like more than anything ever in history of all time and you see all these graphics uh, on the uh, civil war channel uh, specials or on the history channel and, and the devastation that these things also. and I, i've said this before i think if someone Someone who's kind of a novice to firearms uh, sees a lot of that and they think, wow, this is worse than anything. It's a good thing we have more friendly bullets and kinder, gentler bullets these days. You know, I mean, it really, it, it implies that. It really does. Uh, the thing that made these so devastating was, yeah, they're powerful, like getting hit with a shotgun slug or something out there, uh, was uh, they didn't have any treatment, you know? Uh, you get shot in the arm and they just have to take the arm off and uh, then you still might get infected and die. Uh, uh, and they, of course, hit shatter bones and everything. Uh, so that's why so many people died from just getting hit in the arm or the elbow and just various things. Uh, a 5.56 five, round is not exactly a gentle round. The damage it does is incredible. Uh, it's just that you're more likely to survive that or an AK round these days because of the, uh, the medicine right there and the uh, first aid available. You know, helicopter you to a hospital immediately and you know, they can prevent the infection and all that. But yeah, I mean, they're nothing you want to get hit by, right? They're fun to shoot. Big old chunk of lead. It's like you're loading your own shotgun slugs kind of deal. And like that first shot I took, you can load whatever you want. As with any muzzle loader, you can load about any, as long as you get the bullet down on the powder, you can load any, any charge you want, pretty much. Uh, 10 grains, 60 grains, whatever. With black powder, that is. Definitely can't do that with modern powder. Okay. Well, Klein, I guess I picked on you enough. Let's go back out there. Let me try one on that buffalo. See where to hold. I don't know where to hold. <laughs> oh, that's a good feeling and a good sound, wasn't it? That's a good feeling and a good sound. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah, I try to try to be respectful of this thing and ooh, realize 
some of the action it likely saw and uh yeah the targets likely got hit by it so it could have been either side of the civil war because uh, the uh after the first year or two most uh, i guess you'd say most i think certainly the the north this is what they were carrying or the 55 you know the same 1855 model same bullet everything it was basically this you know uh and it's still others what they had to make do with what they had but in the south uh they were less well armed they had probably still flintlocks you know up and towards the end of the war some of them uh a few probably not many i would guess and uh they had a lot of infields you know where they had gotten uh, they got over to uh england first and uh, bought up a bunch of them and uh so they got those in through the blockades and they were 58 caliber and so but if you know you're in a regiment or whatever and you were still using something that was a little bit less desirable than an infield or this and and you had a chance to pick one of these up off the battlefield you know that happened a lot and uh and uh they were stolen and whatever taken but because uh, you have 58 caliber mini ball you know we're very plentiful on both sides so pretty cool i'll have to say and uh i'm going to my plan is to to hang out here for a while i'm going to, i'm going to shoot i wanted to talk to you all and share this beauty with you maybe i'll shoot one more time before i make you leave let me give you a close-up see how how filthy it gets so the next time you see it the cap blow it off see it i mean look how filthy that thing gets really does and uh it it will i don't know about new but it'll be just good shape though because i'll ballast all it up here and clean it up i'm, I'm going to make sure i shoot all i want to shoot uh before i clean it uh uh today uh because as i warn you all if you get into muzzle loading it's probably best to wait for a day when you got time to really enjoy it and go ahead and fire that thing all afternoon and before you clean it because you just it's not the kind of thing you're gonna go out and fire a couple of times you know it's not wise especially if you're using black powder real powder real black powder because it's the same cleaning process it gets you know a mess after one shot so that's my advice uh, you might give us something i wanted to share but I don't know what it was. I'm going to remain here. And I don't know, make sure eight or ten more times. Uh, and just have more fun with this thing before the rain comes in. And, uh, you know, September 15th. I, I, oh, yeah, there's one thing last week I had on the target, September 7th. Yeah, a little off on my calendar, wasn't I? Uh, sure was. But, uh again uh sad to lose paul harrell we'll remember him and uh uh yeah i i i i didn't know him well uh won't pretend that i i just felt a, a kindred spirit when i watched him because of uh, you know it you know it uh when you run to someone who's into firearms and everything, there's this, this, this co common denominator that you have with, with somebody who can talk guns and all that. And when I'd watch his videos and what he would do, I, I, I felt, of course, that same thing, but even stronger than with a lot of people. Because not only was he interested in firearms, he, uh, he was really into a, a lot of the, I mean, we, didn't, we don't do a lot of the stuff he did, you know, shooting in the meat and all the kinds of things like that and testing, but, but his interest and in, in some of the old school guns and what they do when they hit this or that and how these bullets react and all that kind of, I mean, he, he was really uh, into that and uh, that's what made him interesting, you know, so interesting to me. And then his, his approach, uh, his, uh, his style, I thought was great, <laughs> that was great and uh definitely replaced by I me mean, i i've never known anybody you know like him exactly like him nobody is exactly like anybody else but uh, he he was just a unique a unique character and and again there's so 
it was, uh, it, some of you have seen every video he did, uh, you probably have a better handle on that, but from when I would watch him, it just, I, I, I just often was not really sure if he meant that comment to be funny or, or, or not, you know, sometimes. Uh, he just had a way about him, he had a real, real a great sense of humor. And so, and of course that dry humor, and of course people tell me that they think I'm serious when I'm not, and I, so I understand that, but he went to a different level with it. It was, uh, I wasn't ever sure whether, uh, he, he was a master at it. I was never really sure whether he was messing with us or that's just the way he was, because he was a little quirky, right? And I am the king of weird, so I recognize quirky when I see it. And so it, I just never was 100% uh, on that. <laughs> yeah, he was great. Yeah, we'll, we'll miss him. I, uh, so anyway, that's, eh, that's the way it goes. Um, we won't forget him. And uh, I guess I'll end this week a couple of ways. I'll say, don't try this at home, because I'm what you call a professional. Life is good.